Hello everybody, Kelly Atchison at estampabub.com coming to you from a pretty cool Menasha, Wisconsin. Thank you, thank you so much for joining me tonight, whether you're live on Facebook or whether you are coming to me later on YouTube or later on Facebook. I appreciate you watching my video. And I see people are popping in, but it's not telling me on my screen who's coming. There we go, now I can see some pictures. Hi Lori, welcome. I have some great projects lined up for you tonight. Hi Angela, thanks for tuning in. Hi Elizabeth from Marshfield, good to see you on here. Lori, welcome. Hi Sarah. So I had a great week. So um, if you guys follow me, you know what's been going on. My mom had some outpatient surgery on Wednesday. And I went over to her house. She lives about two hours away from me. And I went over to her house on Wednesday and I packed up the whole back of my truck. <laughs> um, yes, Debbie, I'm home. I packed up the whole back of my truck with all kinds of stamping stuff. And of course, I've never prepared for a trip like that. So I don't know what I need. So I just packed like almost everything. <laughs> it was kind of insane. And I warned her. I said, Mom, I'm going to be coming and I'm bringing all my stuff. And she said, that's just fine. Hi, Christy from Australia. Welcome, Pat. So um, I packed up the whole back of my truck and took it over to her house. We spent most of the day at the Marshfield um, Surgery Center. And um, she had a, like a cyst, a big cyst on her shoulder. They ended up removing it and giving her 23 stitches. Nothing to worry about. It was completely benign. But um, I thought that she should have somebody there with her. And so I got to spend the day with her. And she was perfectly fine when we were done with that surgery. We went to the local Mexican restaurant in Marshfield. And oh my gosh, it was just delicious. So she's been doing fine the next day. Her shoulder, you know, it hurt a little bit. But it wasn't a big deal. She never even took any of her Vicodin at all. She just took some Tylenol. And she was fine. So my mom's a pretty tough lady. <laughs> Um, she still hunts and fishes. She's 73 years old, and um, yeah, she's still out there doing everything. So I hope I'm um, um, in that good of shape when I hit 73. <laughs> so hi, Cynthia from West Virginia. Linda, welcome. Kathy, Jenny. Um, let's see, what else is happening? Oh, hang tight here. I am going to get you guys up on the screen so I know what's going on. Um, don't forget to share my video, whether you're on YouTube later or Facebook right now or Facebook later after the live is over. Click on that share button. That really helps me out. Hi, Judy. I haven't seen you or heard from you in a long time. Heather, welcome. Karen, glad you could watch. Okay, I'm going to pull you up on my screen here. See if my internet's gonna cooperate with me. Oh, there I am. All right, let me get everything situated here. I got my hair cut this week. Yeah, my um, stylist is Destiny in Appleton and she is just amazing. I absolutely love her. Not only is she like a great person, but if you need somebody to cut your hair, oh, she does the best haircuts ever. Not even kidding. Um, Okay, now I'm seeing all of my comments coming in, so that's awesome. So, we have some exciting things coming up with Stampin' Up! I'm just going to touch on all this stuff here. Um, on October 23rd, which is Tuesday, for 24 hours only, we have a birthday sale going on. I believe, and I don't know all the details yet, um, but I believe there's going to be a select number of stamp sets that are going to have some percentage off. Not sure what that's going to be, but um, it should be good. And Denise says she's watching on her Stairmaster. You go, girl. <laughs> I went and did some bow hunting this weekend, and my first, um, or this last week, I should say, my first evening in the tree was pretty boring, but at least it was nice out. I never saw a thing like nothing. So that was kind of discouraging. Um, then the second evening that I went out, I had some action, and I posted that on my Facebook page. If you're friends with me, you probably saw that. But I, I saw two does, and they crossed a path that is right by my tree, not close enough for me to um, shoot at them, and I wasn't going to be shooting at does anyways, not this early in the season anyways. Um, 
but uh, then I had a buck sneak up behind me and I saw it, I saw the deer coming. I didn't know it was a buck. And then he popped his head up and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's horns. And so I grabbed my bow, which is hanging in my tree. My husband sets me up like just perfectly. I grabbed my bow and I brought it around and there's a, um, a, a Y in my tree. So this is behind me. So I turned around and I'm looking through this Y and just as I pulled my bow around, my arrow tinged on the arrows in my quiver that are hanging on my stand and it popped it off of the string. So then I had to mess with that. And you know, when you bow hunt, all of your stars need to be aligned for that to be a successful thing. And um, unfortunately, I think when that ting happened, the buck looked right at me and I just froze. And then he turned around and he didn't run away, but he trotted away. Like, so I totally got busted. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, even if I hadn't seen that buck and had the opportunity to grab my bow and maybe get a shot at it, um, just seeing the two does was exciting enough. I absolutely love that. And that's what I love about sitting in a tree. You get to see so many great things. Yeah, Sherry, antlers, horns. We call them horns. Doesn't matter what they are. They go like this and we like them. <laughs> Um, we eat the meat, Mary. We're big venison eaters. I grew up on venison. Like, um, we were kind of poor when I was growing up. So venison really helped us get through a lot of things. And Steve, I missed what you said, but I'm sure it was amusing. You guys will be glad to know that Steve is feeling better. And um, he's going to be on here and he's going to be very sassy tonight, I think. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Thank you. You're new. I'm so glad you could tune in. Um, so anyways, my bow hunting adventure was a lot of fun. Um, it just, you know, when you see deer, it just makes it all worth it. I don't care whether I get a shot or not. It's just exciting to be that close to the deer. So yeah. And Kathy says she likes venison sausage. I do too. Um, so we have a birthday sale coming up on Tuesday and, um, I have two things going on this week. Besides, I have stamp clubs Monday night and Tuesday night, so I'm going to be a busy girl. I also have, on Thursday, Paper Pumpkin, and I'll show you my kit that I got. I should get that out right now. Um, paper Pumpkin, blog hop on Thursday, so make sure you tune in for that. We make alternate ideas using the kit. So Stampin' Up! has the Paper Pumpkin kit, and it shows you what to make with the kit. But I'm in a blog hop where we make alternate ideas, so something other than what the kit was designed for. And we always do a card and a 3D item, so you get a lot of bang um, in that blog hop. It's really fun, and I enjoy the challenge. That's why I love my paper pumpkin kit. Um, Renee says, horns are on sheep and antlers are on deer. Well, that's fine. I'm all good with that, but we call them horns. And um, they are horns, and if you ever get, like, poked with one, you'll know it's a horn. <laughs> no, antlers, whatever. Whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter. I look for horns. I don't call them antlers. It's kind of like, I think, like, in Wisconsin, antlers is the fancy name for the horns. So maybe that's where that, maybe that little bit of redneck is coming out in me because we just don't really call them antlers. They're horns. I saw horns. That's the first thing I look for. I look for horns. So... Um, Steve, <laughs> he will be alone Monday and Tuesday night. <laughs> it's too funny. Yeah. So I'm excited. Um, for Steve, he gets to go on a 10 day bow hunting trip to Nebraska pretty soon. So I'm not only excited for him, but I'll be home too. So I'm kind of excited about that. We enjoy our time away. Time together is great. Time away is fabulous also. Brenda says horns too. Thank you. Yes, Rudolph has antlers and that is a formal name for them. <laughs> we call them horns in Wisconsin. Um, yeah. Okay, what else is happening? Don't forget I have a VIP online club. I've had several of you signing up for um, my VIP online club. And what is that? 
Well, once a month, you place a $25 order in my online store. You do that once a month for six months consecutively, and you get $30 in product of your choice at the end of that. Now, each month, I mail you out a card made with my technique of the month and an instruction card that has a sample of that technique on it. So after a while, you get a whole little booklet you can make up with all these instruction cards. They're a quarter sheet of cardstock, have the sample on them and all the um, directions. So it's a really great reference tool um, for you to look back at and say, oh, I want to stamp today. Let's grab my technique booklet and see what I should make. Or, or I want to try that technique that Kelly did three months ago. So you'll always have it there. So that's, it's a pretty neat deal. You can find all the information for that on my blog, or you can simply email me at kelly at a stamp above and I will um, send you all the information. You can decide if it's something you would enjoy. I know the people that are in it really do enjoy it. Hi, Kathy Miller. Um, let's see, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're new to all of this, or you had a demonstrator and they're no longer active, whatever the case may be, if you need, um, <laughs> if you need catalogs, let me know. I'd be happy to mail them to you. And now my husband is giving me a lesson in antlers and horns. Just wait till you say horns again, Steve, because I don't hear the word antlers coming out of your mouth very often either, Mr. Smarty Pants. <laughs> okay, um, I have winners from last week. I always give away at least three products um, every week on my Facebook Live. And hi, Patty, welcome. Um, first of all, I have these Santa's Workshop enamel shapes. Yay! These are so, so fun. This is going out to Judy Fate of Burlington, Wisconsin. So Judy, if you're watching, I need your address. I do not have Judy's address. If you could please private message that to me on Facebook, that would be awesome so that I can get these out in the mail tomorrow. I always like to get, get to the post office right away on Monday morning. Um, I usually have a video conference call every Monday morning, and when that's over, I head to the post office so I can get that done. They are fun, Mercy. They're very fun. Next, my next winner is Norma Garcia. And let me see. Where did my list go here? Hmm. I don't know what I did with it. Isn't that funny? I had it out here. Um, Norma Garcia, I think, is from the San Diego area. And Norma won for sharing. And she's going to get a packet of the Festive Farmhouse Elements. Whoops, I'll turn them this way. Yay! So, again, I will need your address, Norma, if you could please private message that to me. And now I'm a little concerned because I had um, a bunch of notes here and they're not in my bin, so I don't know what I did with them. Oh, maybe they're right here. Okay, found them, don't worry. <laughs> and last but not least, I have Charlene Schulmeister of Antioch, Illinois. Charlene is going to win the Making Christmas Bright stamp set. I'm going to be using that to show you how to make a really fun, fun fold card with that tonight. So, um, Charlene, I will be dropping this in the mail to you. I hope you're watching again tonight so you get the excitement of winning. That's always fun. Let me put these someplace so I do not lose track of them. Because one time I lost them, I couldn't find them for a day. <laughs> you know how that goes. <clears throat> okay. Um, don't forget to share my video. That is always helpful. I really appreciate that. And if you're going to be placing an online order, that's how, um, let me see. That's how Charlene won the stamp set. Her name was drawn for placing an order. So there's three ways. Order, comment, and share my video. They all get drawings. This is my hostess code for the month of October. If you're going to be placing an online order, you want to use this code. You can find that in the right-hand side on my blog, which is at that address, www.stampabove.com. And don't forget, 
I have orders going in every Thursday. If you do not like to order online, you can always contact me via email, text message, private message on Facebook. You can call me on my phone and I'd be happy to put the order in for you because I know not everybody's comfortable doing that. All right, I have some cards to show you that I received in the mail this week. I have a thank you card from Jeannie Combs. I always say Calms, but it might be Calmus. So this is the fun Halloween card that Jeannie sent me, and it was a thank you for everything she said. I believe Jeannie was one of our winners last week or the week before. So thanks, Jeannie. That's so sweet. I also, this is kind of funny. Um, right now, people are signing up for my um, old-fashioned Christmas stamp camp that I have November 2nd and 3rd in Nina, Wisconsin. And um, so I'm getting a lot of checks in the mail. And believe me, I love money. So this is all good for me. <laughs> but this is the card that I received from Lori Inderdahl. And Lori is coming to that stamp camp. And it's so funny because this is a very old stamp set. And this was made at a class that I taught when I taught classes at Hobby Lobby several years ago. So that was pretty funny. Um, wanted to notify you guys too, right before I went live, I put a link to sign up for my newsletter and, um, the link wouldn't go through all the way. It says something about there's a CAPTCHA error, which I don't understand all that stuff, but, um, I'll be getting that fixed tomorrow and I'll repost it. I know Debbie, um, was it Debbie that tried to sign up and then she said, that it didn't work. So thank you so much for telling me that. Doggone it. Debbie Fiedler, I believe. Um, you know, when things don't work, it's just so frustrating. So I'll be calling my newsletter company and finding out what exactly that means. And I, yeah, Karen got the same or, same um, error. So thank you for trying. But I'll get that fixed tomorrow and I'll be posting it. And I already sent out my first week in the 12 Weeks of Holidays series in my newsletters. But don't worry, I'm using a new format this year that you will get to see last week's too. Debbie Foster. Yes, Debbie, thank you. You're the one who told me about it. I really appreciate it. Um, but you'll be able to see all the projects that I put in my newsletter last week. I'll be sending out another one this week. So it's a lot of fun. And these are exclusive items that you're not going to see on my blog or my Facebook page or anything. They're private. So um, it's a lot of fun. All right, back to the things I got in the mail this week. Patty Hall sent me a check for the stamp camp with this card. And this is using that vellum, um, graceful, is it graceful garden or something like that vellum. And she made up this tiny little card and isn't that just adorable? She's got some of those pearls on there. It was so cute. So thank you, Patty, for that. And then Patty Skiba, and I know she's on here tonight. Check out this beauty. Holy cow. Patty sent this to me, and isn't that just beautiful? Gorgeous, gorgeous car using that farmhouse bundle absolutely love it and she's got a lot of um dazzling diamonds down here for the snow oh there you go now it's sparkling isn't that just beautiful yeah very very pretty thank you so much patty and one more thing this is from my friend june and june lives in gardenia california and june found me online and was so excited because she said she had contacted several different demonstrators in her area and nobody ever got back to her. I was just appalled. So um, June has been my customer ever since she found me online and I answered her immediately. And I do try to give the best um, customer service. So Pat says, I need a tiara just like what you are wearing. Can you share where you found it? Um, we actually bought it um, at a store in Salt Lake City, and I wasn't along for that little shopping trip. I was at the Apple store buying a new laptop, so my two friends went to some little store in Salt Lake City and bought the tiaras. We each have one because we are better together, and so we wear tiaras, and it helps me stamp better. <laughs> it's all in my head. <laughs> so anyways, um, June Franco, check out this. Isn't this just the cutest? Look at she's got that so it wiggles around. And this is what you call a diorama card. 
So it's really neat. It sits up on your on your table just like this. She's got a little area back here that she wrote on and it says, hope you have a happy Halloween. And then June sent me this pin and she crocheted this and it's a little spider web with a spider in it. So I will definitely be wearing this because I think it is just adorable. And let me put it on right now, June, because why wouldn't I? see if I can I can't see that close up can you guys see that close up no <laughs> most of us can't okay there it is Ta -da! I love it that was so sweet okay let me move some of the stuff and then I have some items to show you from this week yeah congratulations to the winners thank you guys that's always so nice when you congratulate each other um good sportsmanship okay so what did we have this week I made some cards this week. So this was my Wednesday tip video. And the tip was all about using line images that you would normally have to color in without coloring. And this card, whoops, this card right here was designed by my friend Kathy Miller. And I asked her if I could use it for my video. And of course she said yes. And this card I designed, but both super quick and easy cards using line images where you think you would have to um, color them in, but you don't have to color those line images. There's other things you can do with them. And I had several people contact me and leave messages on my YouTube channel saying, thank you so much for pointing that out because they always look at those. If they don't like to color, they always look at those cards or those stamp sets as, no, I wouldn't like that one. But now they're kind of looking at them a little different. So that's cool. And then I shared the tip about this little oval using the Christmas bulb builder punch to punch that out and then you just have a tiny little bit of cutting on each end of it. So that was another tip that was shared um, with me by my upline Ann Hebner. So that was cool. And then I mentioned that I have card kits. So this card right here and it's got a watercolor wash in the background there. This card right here I have card kits that I'm going to be sending out when you place a $50 or more order with me. Um during this next week, I'll send you one of these card kits so you can make one of these cards. It comes with the watercolor paper, the um, braided trim, the designer paper, and I've embossed with the tin tile embossing folder the background for this card. So, super cool. Yeah, Shelby said she's looking at those stamps differently now, too. I know, right? You just don't think about that. Um, and I like to color, so it's not really something that runs through my mind a lot, but sometimes I'll see, see stuff and, and I'll be like, wow, that's a lot of coloring, but you don't really have to color with it. You can also use those images and you can emboss and then sponge over them for a resist technique, and that's really cool too. Okay, here's another card that I made this week. I had a lot going on on my blog this week. It was crazy. Um, I had two or three blog hops this week. This was for the um, control freaks. I knew I could get it out of my mouth. This one was for the control freaks and we had a fall theme. So I used the Colorful Season stamp set for this one. And I just love, love, love that pop of gold with my fall cards. I think it's really pretty. So I carried that through. I have to show you one more card that was made for me. This came from Shelly Olson, and I contacted Shelly right away and asked her if I could recreate her card for my blog hop with the Creative Inking blog hop group, which was the first time I've ever been in that one. And here's what I came up with. So I used um, Sahara Sand for my background. I think Shelly used Crumb Cake. And then Shelly's got that cute little acorn and leaf in there. That's not current anymore. So um, while I do absolutely love it, I use the Falling for Leaves bundle, and that is in the Holiday Mini Catalog. So isn't that cool? You'll find videos for almost all of these projects on my blog from the last week. So like I said, holy cow, I was so busy this week. Um, I also have another really pretty card that I'm going to be sharing tomorrow. It's a Christmas card, and hopefully I'll have that um, sign up for my newsletter figured out and fixed too. So that's going out with 
the Christmas card that I'm posting tomorrow. Then the other thing, oh my gosh, did you guys see this? Like, holy cow. This turned out so, so pretty. So um, one of the things that I wanted to do was put a little embossing paste on it. I wanted to put some embossing paste on the top of the letters to make it look like snow. And I didn't even think of it before I um, did my video and finished it. So, ugh. Um, Amy's asking, how is my mom? My mom is great. Shelby asks, how's mom? Mom is wonderful. She didn't even take any of her... Um, uh, Vicodin. So that was awesome. And Vicky's asking, how long have I been a demonstrator? 14 years I've been doing this and I absolutely love my job. Karen says she loves the 3D stuff. I do too, right? I love making gifts with my supplies because, and my family loves getting them. All right. The other thing that I wanted to share with you is, um, if you're part of my team, I'm going to, I got another set of bone folders engraved with a Stamp Above Creative Crew on it. So I am going to be um, handing those out for promotions and all kinds of other stuff, you guys. So if you're on my team, look forward to that. And I also have some, I might be giving these away as door prizes um, coming up, but this says, oops, that's the wrong one. This says my, um, blog address on there, www.stampabove.com, bone folders. I'll be giving these out too. So I just got some engraved. That's always fun, right? Okay, somebody just asked me a question here and I missed it. Hang on, my thing is not keeping up. Hmm. Yeah, I'm happy my mom is doing good too. Whoever just asked me a question, if you want to repost that, because it went by on my screen so fast. Um, what are you guys drinking tonight? This is not my blue anniversary cup. This is my silver older cup. So, yes, Heather, <laughs> you've known me for 14 years. Isn't that crazy? I've got Pepsi in here. I was drinking my um, raspberry lemonade earlier today. And now I'm drinking Pepsi. I need a little sugar boost. Pick me up. So I thought that was a good good plan. Okay. Um, I am going to turn my camera around. There's a couple things I want to show you before we get started here on this snow frame. And then if we have time, I might show you some swap cards. I just received a swap in the mail over the weekend. And oh my gosh, they're beautiful. So I might, be, I might have time to share that with you. Okay. True lemon raspberry lemonade flavor. See, I need to try that true lemon, Denise. I thought I bought some of that, but then I don't know. I buy things and I put them in the cupboard and I forget about them. I'm terrible that way. Kathy's got wine. Good for you. I wish I was a wine drinker. Um, I have never liked wine. Darn it. Wine is so popular, right? Okay, I'm going to turn my camera around, you guys. And um, if you get motion sickness, you're going to want to close your eyes. Yes, my phone is plugged in, Kathy. Thank you. Close your eyes until I tell you to open them because I don't want anybody throwing up during my show. <laughs> That's not allowed. Just a minute. Okay, and I'm going to turn off that bright light because I think you guys told me that you didn't like it. Do you think that's too dark? How's that looking? I'm waiting for it to pop up on my laptop screen so I can see what you're seeing. So don't look yet. Yeah, see that takes some of the glare off. Now if I turn it on again, let's bring this white thing over here. Oops, let's turn that light on again. See, it's so bright that it really kind of, what do you guys think? Should I leave it on? Should I turn it off? I don't know. Yeah, that's too bright. I don't like it. I'm turning it off. Okay, so let's get my phone situated here. And we're going to... There we go. Everything looks good. This is my host code. You'll find that on the right side of my blog at www.stampabub.com. Anytime that you're on there, it's going to be on the right-hand side. So you'll find it there. Let me move my cord. You can open your eyes now, you guys. I'm done bouncing you around. Let me get my cord out of the way here. Okay, I think we're good. My light's in place. Lights, camera, action! Oh, I have to turn my mirroring around. Whew, 
crazy. Okay, now we're good. Okay, so um, I wanted to show you the paper pumpkin kit. I just opened this up today. I'm super excited. And our kit for November is going to be in this cute little Christmas color plaid box. So um, that's going to be fun. And let's see, here's our stamp set. Can you see that very good? Um, let me pull it up here. This is our stamp set. So we've got some great greetings in there and some leaves and some little imagey things. Get well, I love get well stamps, right? Um, may hope make you feel lighter. Oh, that's sweet. Friends of a feather stick together in thinking of you and then this feather. So, and we got a uh, Night of Navy ink spot. And then Paper Pumpkin always comes all wrapped up, just like, almost like it's from, um, where is that, Tiffany's that does the, the tissue paper? But look at these cards. Try to keep the glare off of there from the light. These look so, so pretty. I can't wait to see what I come up with from these. And everything is in here, and it makes eight different cards. So these are so much fun. Lisa got hers Thursday. Awesome. Yeah, it'll be fun. So check back on my blog on Thursday because that's when I will have the um, Paper Pumpkin Blog Hop going on. I love my Paper Pumpkin. I, now I'm going to set this over on my shelf so I don't forget about it because that wouldn't be too cool my people will be not be happy with me. <laughs> okay, first thing I wanted to do here, I'm going to get out my embossing paste. Now, it would be better if I were using the shimmery white embossing paste, but I don't have any right now, and I didn't realize that, you know what, I should write that down on my list. Embossing paste. Hang on, otherwise I'll forget, and I want the shimmery stuff, because I didn't put the lid on good, and it dried up on me, so yeah. You know, things you do when you're in a hurry. So, uh, but I do have the regular white embossing paste. And what I was talking about is just taking some of this and putting it on my letters. Like it's snow on the, you know, like it's snowed and the snow's at the top of the letters. That's what I was kind of talking about. I thought would be kind of neat. Oh, I love that. What do you guys think of that? Kind of neat, right? Oh, Kelly, you want the light on? You guys think the light on is better? Well, let's see. Okay, hang tight. I'm going to get my little light tools out here again. Okay, you tell me. If you don't like that, I will leave it on. Nope, Cynthia wants the light off. And light off, light off, turn it off. Okay. We're going off. Always willing to try things here, you guys. Um, here we go. Light on, light off. There we go. We're good. We're golden now. I'm not going to play with it anymore. Sorry. I want to make sure you guys are getting the best view that you can here. All right. Little bit of snow. Yeah, I think this is like, oh my gosh, this is so cool, you guys. <laughs> I wish I would have thought about this in my video, but it just never even dawned on me. And then I think what happened is I saw somebody made another piece of framed art with something else. And they used the shimmery white snow on or embossing paste on there. And it was just oh, so precious. What do you think? Oh, I just pulled it off. There we go. I love it. Isn't that cute? Ah! Okay, just wanted to show that to you guys because I, it was an afterthought and I wanted you to know how to make the best framed art possible, right? Now, with these, um, these are our palette knives and you get a whole little pack of them to use with the embossing paste. They're in the annual catalog and I just wipe them off and put them back in here and put them away. They're perfect. Okay. Oh, so pretty. I'm going to set that right over here so I don't lose track of it. Okay, are we ready to stamp? Um, yeah. Oh, Donna says she loves my nail color. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, it's a just a, such a unique blue, right? Oh, look, I got a little cut there. That's probably from hunting. I don't know. I get kind of rough on myself sometimes. All right, so I had a very um, interesting request. 
you guys know that I posted a card on my blog on Monday. Oh, and I was going to go find out who actually made that card. Um, another thing I wanted to tell you is, did you know that not everything I post on my blog is actually what I make? Usually on Mondays, sometimes it's mine, but on Mondays I post from um, a resource group that I'm in. And what it is, it's um, a virtual swap. And there's a, I'm in several of these groups, um, Stamping Up Demonstrators. We do this all the time. And I like, okay, so here, let me grab, mm, let's grab this card. I already made this for you guys, or I don't know, we did this at my card buffet. Um, I make a card, I design a card, and then I write up a project sheet like you guys can find on my blog to um, download. And you can download it and print it or you can save it to your computer. I'm in a group with other Stamping Up demonstrators and we each contribute one card. So we take photos of it, we contribute a photo and also the project sheet with all the ingredients, dimensions and instructions um, in there. And I get to select from that every month. And when I need something for my blog, I go to that virtual group and I select something. So one of the cards that I got the most um, engagement from was this gorgeous thing. And this is, I did not design this, but somebody asked me today if I could do the watercoloring on the trees because theirs never turns out like that. And I thought, you know, that is one of those things that I really should um, show you guys how to do. So today I played a little bit with this and I... I'm going to show you how to do this. So while this card is not my design, I did not design this, um, I do have access to making it for you. So let's get out. Oh, thank you, Gilmore. I'm, I'm so glad you liked the, the snow on the letters. Yeah, I've got the light off. Um, I think we're good now. And I moved my stamp set because I forget that my lamps that are right here, they will glare off of this plastic stuff, which is not fun for you guys. I know that. All right, here we go. Um, We're going to take this layer right here. This layer is, and you can find all of these dimensions and all the information about this card on my blog on this last Monday, which was the 15th. I'm going to take this piece of very vanilla. This is three by four. And I'm going to stamp, ink up my tree stamp from the Winter Woods, which, oh, you guys, mm, must have. An absolute must have. It's so, so pretty. And I'm going to, I'm using Early Espresso ink here. I'm going to ink this up, and I'm just going to stamp it right on here. There we go. I love these trees. They're so pretty. And then I've got this little ground image. And I'm just going to stamp that up and down and then back up again. Just like that. You don't have to overthink this too much. Okay. Let me close this up because we all know what happens if <laughs> you leave your ink pads open. Yeah. Now, I'm bringing in my watercolor pencils here. Oh, Sue, don't worry. Your paper pumpkin will get there. I promise. Um, oh, Shara is saying to change the bulb next time so it's not so bright. Well, here's the deal. The light that I was turning on and off, that's actually a Facebook feature that brightens up the video. So um, I don't have any control over how bright it is or not but I know that when I when when my camera is facing me it's better to have the light on and then when I come down here to show you what I'm making I turn it off because it's just it's goofy it just doesn't do well okay watercolor pencils so what I pulled out here is daffodil delight old olive and calypso coral and I am just going to come in here and color with my watercolor pencil. And you guys know when you use watercolor pencils and you're going to be blending them, whether you're doing it with a paintbrush or an aqua painter or a blender pen, you do not need to be neat because that blending is what's gonna make everything 
so pretty. I'm also doing it down here to the ground. And so far it looks pretty icky, right? <laughs> it's just not very attractive. Now I'm gonna come in with some orange. And again, this is Clipso Coral. Good fall colors. And then my Daffodil Delight. Now every time you do this, this is gonna be different, right? Every time you color like this, it's gonna turn out different. And I did throw in some rich Razzleberry in the sample that I made earlier today, but I think I'm gonna like this better because the rich Razzleberry, I don't know, I just felt like there was too many colors. Too many colors going on there. Bring in some of the yellow down here for the ground, and I forgot my Calypso Coral down here, so I'll just bring that in. Now, I've got a blender pen here. You get three of these in a pack for like, I don't know, 10 or $12. They're pretty inexpensive. But one of the things you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your ink is dry from stamping. We're not using Stazon because I wanted brown ink. That's what the original designer of this card used. So I use Early Espresso. Early Espresso is not a waterproof ink. So coming in now with the blender pen, you might find a little bit of that brown that's gonna bleed, okay? So when I do this, I'm coming in here and I'm wiping off my blender pen because it's getting picking up some of that brown ink. And that's what I did to recreate her card, is I came in, you don't wanna over color it because it's pulling that brown. And this worked out really good. Like, it wasn't that big of a deal to keep cleaning this off. And I think I could make a bunch of these, but I thought the colors really looked nice. So, another thing that people think when they're doing watercolor techniques like this, they think that theirs never looks as good as what they saw online or whatever. You've got to stop being so hard on yourself. And the other thing you need to do is what I'm doing right now, I think looks just horrible. But as soon as I take a step back from it, it's gonna look so much better. And that's what you need to do when you're creating your cards is take a step back. Because like when I first start with the watercolor, I'm like, oh, that's kind of ugly on this particular, this particular technique. But this is exactly what she did. It wasn't that simple. Like, it's so easy. Okay, hang on while I get my comments up here. I don't know why my comments don't. Okay, Lori says, I'm afraid of my watercolor pencils, but they don't do anything without me, so I better get brave. <laughs> do not be afraid. Oh, and Shelby's asking, how do you know when to use the blender pens or the aqua painter? Shelby, it is completely preference. Completely preference. I think you have a little more control um, with the um, blender pen if you're doing something really um, intricate. But, um, you know, either one works just fine. Uh, I think there's something to do with the solution that's in here too versus water, but I don't remember what that was. I'm, I just don't know. Um, so Amy says, I use blender pens. The, oh, when you use blender pens, the cardstock pills. Well, I can tell you right now that my cardstock is not pilling. And I think what you may be doing, Amy, is that you are over coloring. Like you saw how I just do, a little bit. I'm not sitting there and keep coloring on there. That's when you get pilling. And you'll get the same thing with Aqua Painter too if you keep doing the water on there. But um, I think that's what you may be doing is you're, you need to just come in real quick and do your thing. Okay? So that's, that's my two cents worth on them. And um, I use my Aqua Painter more than I use my blender pens. And I'm not really sure exactly why. I just do. I don't know why. It's just my preference. Now, the next thing that I wanted to do to this is bring in some of the bright copper shimmer paint. And I'm just gonna stick my sponge down in that lid. And now I wanna dissipate it because I don't want big globs, okay? So I'm, I'm just dissipating it here so I don't end up with big globs. And I'm just gonna touch my trees 
with that copper shimmer paint. And oh my gosh, you guys, this is such a beautiful technique. Now I know you probably can't see it very good in the camera. Oh, maybe you can, let me see. I'm gonna stand up and take a look at if it's sparkling. Can you see that? That really adds so much to the beauty of this fall display of color, I guess is a good way to put it. Let me put this away before I do something silly. And then I'm gonna add this to a piece of Cajun Craze that's just a little bit quarter inch bigger. Again, all these dimensions are on my blog from Monday. And that's Monday the 15th, I believe. Oh, maybe it was Thursday the 18th. It might be the 18th. It was on there last week. And inside the card, I decided to use those birch trees and I just stamped them right here on a piece of vanilla and put that early espresso. I carried that whole thing over into the inside. This is the Frosted Floral Designer Series paper. That's the pattern right here, so that looks pretty neat. And I've added some dimensionals to the back of my layer, and then I'm going to finish it up. Maybe I'll mail this out with one of the winner's prizes, we'll see. I always like to include a card when I'm sending out those prizes I did drawings for. A little tape there. Oh, I got it right over my dimensional. Well, we'll fix that in a minute. That's what happens when you try to work ahead a little bit. <laughs> I have my dimensionals on there already because this card was already featured on my blog. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it. But I've got the... Um, Dimensionals on the back here. And here we go. I'm gonna set that right on here. And then I'm going to take this little piece, this is that braided trim. Take this little piece here and tie it on. Oh, I got that kind of long, didn't I? Trim that off a little bit. There we go. Is that kind of crooked? Yeah. Hang on. Those dimensionals, they are, they'll be forgiving for just a little while. So if you get something crooked, you can pop them up right away. But isn't that just a spectacular card? Now here's the other one that I made and I used the Rich Razzleberry and I used some early um, espresso watercolor pencils and you can kind of see the difference. There's some Rich Razzleberry in here. So you can do whatever you want, but there you go. I mean, like I said, while you're close to it and you're doing it, it's like, oh my gosh, this doesn't look that great. But once you stop and you take a step back and look at it, it is beautiful. And that's often the way my watercoloring goes. So, yeah. Okay, let me set that aside and get my little area cleaned up here. Oh, I had out my copper spray too. I sprayed uh, this one. This is the one that I made earlier today. I sprayed that one and I was like, no, nah, I think I like the sponging better. So that's when I changed my mind on that. Okay. I think we're ready for our next project. I'm super excited about these. I had a lot of work done while I was at my mom's house. You saw my pictures. I just kind of moved in. And um, she was like totally happy to have me there. So that was really fun. We went out for lunch with her friends, and that's always fun. So I just kind of made a whole thing of it. And believe me, my mom was really fine. Like, yeah, you'd think she would have been resting or whatever. Well, we did kind of sit around a lot. I mean, I did. I was I was uh, working right in the living room at that table. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. Oh, by the way, you guys. Um, I will be posting all the dimensions for all of these cards um, as soon as we're done here. As soon as I'm done with this video, I post it to my Facebook page and then I come in there and I edit the document and I put in all the dimensions. And Cheryl asks, what do you mix the paint with to make it spray? That's a great question. Okay, let's come back here a little bit. Um, this is rubbing alcohol. It's just the alcohol you buy at the store. And these are our spritzers. And what I love about our spritzers, you get three in a pack or two in a pack for $3, I think. 
um, they have a very fine mist. So you're gonna fill that spritzer up about three quarters of the way with your rubbing alcohol. And then you're going to shake this up. It's got one of those shaky ball things in it. You're gonna shake that up and you're gonna drop about two drops in there and then shake this up. So what I recommend is that you buy two packs of spritzers and I've got my white shimmer paint, my gold shimmer paint, my champagne shimmer paint, and my copper paint all ready to roll anytime I wanna spritz anything. And believe me, it's really hard to see it on the camera, but when you spray your cards, the shimmer you get from the shimmer paint is just amazing. We have four different colors. So those are all found in the Holiday Mini Catalog. If you have any questions about them, um, let me know and I'll help you You know, find out where they are. But yeah, highly recommend Shimmer Paint. I have a video on one of my Wednesday videos where I made, or I used the Shimmer Paint in a whole bunch of different ways. I used it with sponge daubers. I used it with sponging. Um, you can apply it to your rubber on your stamp and stamp with it. You can spray it. It's just, it's an amazing product. All right, next card. You guys excited to be seeing this one? I'm excited to be playing with this stamp set. And I'm actually combining the Dashing Deer and the Detailed Deer Thinlets with the Alpine Adventure and the Alpine Sports. So, um, and by the way, just so you know, this sled that's on here came from the Alpine Sports Thinlet Dyes. That's where that sled is coming from. And the snowflakes and the let it is from that whole bundle. The large letter framelits are where the snow came from. And then I used brush show on watercolor paper to make that. That is on my blog on uh, Saturday morning, I believe I posted it. Okay, here's all of our little things going on. I'm gonna get out all my pieces and my dies. Hang on here. Oh, there came a die. Here came another die. Oh, and I got one more. There we go. And my cheat sheet. So I know what I'm what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I look knowledgeable. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that can be kind of tricky. <laughs> Okay, so out of the um, Dashing Deer or Detailed Deer Thin Lip Dyes, I'm going to be using the Jumping Deer, and then I've got the Wreath and the Bow out of the Alpine Sports. And again, that's where that sled is coming from. So I'm gonna be using those two. And the red scrap, this is real red, that's for that bow. Then, let's do some stamping here. Oh my goodness. Here we go. I've got Shaded Spruce is my ink and real red. Did I use, I must, I don't know. I'm kind of like going back and forth. Did I use real red or did I use Cherry Cobbler? Well, we'll see. <laughs> okay, this is that cute little wreath from the Alpine Adventure. And then you take the little berry one and you stamp that. I'm gonna have to stand up so I can get this on my wreath. Well, close enough. Um, you might wanna do a better job than I did. But anyways, that makes this little wreath and then you die cut it with the die. And, yeah. Hang on just a second, because I just lost something. I hate it when that happens. Oh, here it is. Ta-da! So, through the magic of TV, I've already done that. And then, let me put this away, because you know how dies. Oh, let's put it right in my little dish here. That's an even better idea. It's a metallic. Whoops. Whoops. Oh, things are falling. Hang on. Dangerous in here. <laughs> okay, so I've got that done. Like I said, I was going to do this bow in real red, so I've already die cut that. And I'll drop that in my little dish. This is a little magnetic dish that you can get at um, 
Harbor Freight or any type of mechanic store. Mechanics use this to put bolts in and stuff so they don't lose it, but it's 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 magnetic. And that was a gift from, I believe, Linda Bond sent that to me. So thank you, Linda. And then this piece, this piece is three and a half by four. So four by three and a half. And notice I put deer on here the right way so that I made sure I die cut it the right way. I'm just going to put the deer right on this very vanilla layer and I'm going to die cut it. And when you do that, it's going to look like this. And I'm going to use my take your pick tool. Hang on, I'm still standing up here. I'm going to sit down. And I'm just going to pop out the antlers. <laughs> And notice I said antlers because that's fancy, and this is a very fancy deer. So I will appease everybody with the antlers. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna save this deer and its fancy antlers, and I'm going to use this for something else, but I don't need it for this card. Oh, and you know what I did? <gasps> I forgot to cut my designer series paper, so hang tight here. Can't believe I did that. But I happen to have some right here. And okay, you guys, take a drink while I get my paper cutter out. Whether you're drinking wine or whatever it may be here, I'll take a drink. Wet that whistle. All right. The designer series paper layer is four by three and three quarters. And so this is my four. And here's my three and three quarters. I usually have this all cut up, but I forgot. I didn't do that part yet. And this is the paper that I'm using, is the All Is Bright Designer Series paper. This real life, this is real life. These are actually felt stockings and they're photographed. Real life picture. This is also real life with the bulbs. This is just really, really cute paper. We're going to be doing a card using this next week, and the one that's posting on my blog tomorrow uses this paper, too. It's really, really pretty. Okay, let's get this out of the way. So here we go. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back of my bow, and I'm going to stick that right on the top of my little wreath. Okay, we got that ready to roll. Then I'm going to grab, turning this over to the back, and I'm going to grab my mini dimensionals and we're going to give this some support close to the to the buck. Oops, here we go. And maybe one more right there. Then I've got my bigger dimensionals just to go around the outside. Don't forget to share my video if you came on later. I know I sound like a broken record, but I want you to have an entry into one of my prize drawings. So if you came on here, you need to comment at least once so that I know you were here so you can be entered in the drawing for commenting. When you share my video, you get entered again, and when you place an order, you get entered again. So there's three ways to be entered to win. Okay, let me get this little mess cleaned up. I vacuumed today. My husband, I think, was pretty impressed, but here's why I did it. <laughs> because I had all that stuff out of my room that I took to my mom's house, and so I thought, oh, it's kind of empty, so I should really um, vacuum a little bit in here before I brought it all back in, right? <laughs> so, you know, it was, I did it for myself. But then I vacuumed the rest of the house, too. He kind of yells at me for not cleaning. And um, he does most of the cleaning because, well, you know what? He's retired, so... Eh, hang on. You're going to lay this on that piece of designer series paper, and this is going to be so, so pretty. But you really do have to get it on there straight. So that looks better. There we go. Whew. Isn't that pretty? And yeah, mine's a little, little bit. Oh, I got it to straighten out. Okay. So 
here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this, whoops, this is our card base. This is 11 by four and a quarter. And I am going to, I've scored it at five and a half. And we're going to stamp the words, happiest Christmas wishes. And those are hopefully going to be straight and they're going to be right down here. <gasps> well, they're a little bit crooked, but they'll work. Okay. Next, we're going to take this piece and add it to that front. Just like this. What do you guys think? Pretty so far? And I'll have to tell you, I got this layout idea from that stamping event that I went to in Nailsville a couple weeks ago, which is my hometown. I'm using the um, satin it's called Mixed Satin Ribbon. It's 3 8 inch wide. And if you haven't seen this yet, one half of it looks like grosgrain ribbon and the other half just looks like satin ribbon. And isn't that very interesting? So um, anyways, this was a layout for one of the cards that we made at that event. And I've changed it up a little bit. She used the wood textures. Um, designer series paper behind the deer and I wanted it to be a little bit more of a Christmas card. Okay, so I wish I had somebody's finger here to help me with this bow, but let's see how good Kelly can can do with one hand here. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, I think I did it. Yay! Okay, it's nice if you have a finger in there to help you, right? Hold it tight. Butts around with this a little bit. Come on, get out there. There you go. <gasps> so pretty. I really like this ribbon. It's one of those ribbons that lays really nice when you're um, tying it. And then here's what I did to the ends of my ribbon. I'm going to fold it over so it's folded in half. So I fold it in half this way. And then, oops, you gotta make sure that you keep it folded in half Otherwise, this won't work so good. So I've got it folded in half. See that end that it made there? <gasps> Fancy, right? And then we're going to do this side. I'm going to do the same thing. There we go. Isn't that cute? Okay, now, we're not done yet. We've got some more things to do here. So what is this little wreath for, you might ask? Well, we're gonna stamp. This piece of very vanilla is um, bum, 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 three and three quarters by five. And I'm going to stamp the greeting. And this is all with the Dashing Deer stamp set. I'm gonna stamp that little greeting and we're gonna hope it's straight. Well, that's pretty good. That's kind of crooked. Let's try it again. Mm. Oh, that's crooked too. Hang on. I don't like that. Here, I stamped that one. <laughs> Just in case I had problems with that. Words are hard to get straight, aren't they? So, um, I stamped that and then I took this image, which is right here, and it's oh so pretty. And I used the shaded spruce ink for that, real red ink here. And then I've got a layer of real red that is four by five and a quarter. I'm gonna put this three and three quarters by five, very vanilla layer on here. And then I took this little wreath, bless its heart. It's so like pretty, pretty. And I put that right at the top. And isn't this a fancy inside for a card? So I thought the front of my card is just rather, um, I don't want to say simple, but it's, you know, it's not cluttered up or anything. And I thought, oh, I need a fancy inside for this. So what do you guys think? We've got a couple more things to do here. Let me get these closed up before, you know, you know what happens. I have a disaster. All right. I'm watching comments. I know I'm missing stuff. You could also emboss the negative die cut with the subtle embossing folder. Yeah, you sure could, Amy. That's a great idea. Thank you, Lisa, for the page six on the holiday catalog. This is truly a spectacular bundle of products. It really is. 
All right, last but not least, these little things, the red rhinestone basic jewels are like my new favorite. I have been having so much fun with these. I'm gonna take my take your pick tool and I'm gonna turn it around so that I have that spatula end out here. And we're going to grab some of these red rhinestones and this is just really going to dress up the front of this card. And I'm gonna use five of them. You get like a gazillion of them on a card. I don't remember how much they are, five, six, seven dollars, but um, yeah, they're just so, so pretty. There we go. That beautiful um, All Is Bright Designer Series paper and the inside. What do you guys think? <gasps> Love. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I was kind of giddy about this one, too. It's like this turned out so pretty and elegant. I absolutely love it. Alpine Adventure, Alpine Sports Thinlets, Dashing Deer, and Detailed Deer Thinlets. Now remember, all of these um, dimensions will be on my, on the Facebook Live video information as soon as I'm done here. I will post those for you. I have them typed up and ready to drop in. Okay, let me put my deer over here and this. All right, now I have a fun fold, you guys. I think you're going to love this. And I'll just put away and put this back on. I know I'm going to lose that lid, right? Can you just see that happening? Okay, so I had to play with this set, Making Christmas Bright. I made a couple fall cards out of the other stamp set that matches this punch. And let me find it here for you. Making every day bright. So these are all occasion. You've got Easter eggs and a bunny and spiders for Halloween and Christmas, winter, summer, a penguin. There's just some really cute images in here. This goes along with the Christmas bulb builder punch, okay? So this is the stamp set that's a bundle. When you buy these two together, you save 10%. But this is another one that goes along with that punch. And it's also in the holiday mini catalog. I am using the Joyous Noel Designer Series paper. We've got Smoky Slate, Cherry Cobbler, and I think I need to grab the, um, hang on a second. Oh, I don't know what that is, but I need to grab the shaded spruce ink pad. Yep, right here. Okay, because we're going to use that again, too. So, did you guys see this glimmer paper in the holiday mini catalog? It is so delicious. Look at that. Ah. Okay, so the colors that are actually listed on this paper are Mary Merlot is the red. And then they call the orange copper and the green is Tranquil Tide. But you're going to see that the Tranquil Tide actually matches the shaded spruce beautifully. So that's why I chose the shaded spruce because that's what color I wanted, color of green that I wanted to use. All right, let me put this away. Okie dokie, cardstock layers here. I'm a little cheat sheet. Okay, here comes all the things. Oh, and then I've got a card to show you where this idea is coming from, too. Because I know you're going to love it. Okay, we are using the Joyous Noel. I've got all three colors here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to punch out a bulb out of each one of these. So I've got the Copper, the Tranquil Tide, and the Mary Merlot. This really is a nice deep red, but it goes fine with the bright reds too. So I like that. Then I got um, a scrap of Whisper White here. I'm gonna use Smoky Slate ink. And I am making the little bulb end. 
So I just needed something really subtle for that. And I need three of them, right? So I just stamped three of them on a little scrap of Whisper White. And then you just punch them out like this. Okay, there we go. So we've got those ready to roll. I'm going to close this back up. I don't think we need that again. Then... I've got two pieces of the All is Bright Designer Series paper, and this time, instead of using this side, we're gonna use the polka dot side. This one is seven eighths by five and a half, and this one is, I think, three quarters by four. Let me make sure, hang on. Da, 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 da. Oh, five eighths by four, okay. Then I've got a piece of Whisper White. This is the front, we're gonna stamp on that. It's two and three quarters by four. I've got another piece of Whisper White. This one is four by five and a quarter, and then it's scored at two and a half, so I've already got that scored. Piece of the Mary Merlot, that is three by four and a quarter, and then here is our card base, and this is the Shaded Spruce. So first thing I'm gonna do, this is five and a half by eight and a half. I'm gonna fold this in half, and burnish that edge, and then I've scored it at one inch here. So I'm just gonna fold that over. That I brought it back towards me. Oh, and then I've got my card sitting over here. <laughs> Covering up all my comments. Ah. Yeah, so just know that if I missed your comment, I do go back through my comments because it's hard to stamp and stay in my mind where I need to be and view your comments, and it's a lot of things, right? So as much as I try to, it doesn't always happen. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add some glue to my tab that I'm folding backwards. And then I'm going to come in with my glue. You guys notice how little glue I use, right? You can barely see that. This paper sticks very easily, so you don't need to get too nutty with the glue and it actually sticks better if you don't use too much. I know sometimes people say, I get like lumps under my glue. That's because you're using so much glue. You just wanna scribble with it. You don't wanna hold it up and pour it out. You notice that I touch my cardstock and I scribble with it, and it's a very, very thin, thin line coming out there. Then I've got the Festive Farmhouse Cotton Twine. Yes, Jenny. You need the holiday glimmer paper, for sure. <laughs> and that's my job. <laughs> the enabler, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to, this is cotton baker's twine. It comes in um, like mossy meadow, very vanilla, and um, cherry cobbler. It's so, so, so pretty. And it's very, very soft. It's a little bit thicker than our regular Baker's Twine. And it's just so soft. I absolutely love it. And this is on the page with the farmhouse bundle. That's where this is coming from. So I'm just going to tie myself a bow. Let's see if I can keep my thumb in there. Oh, I did really good. <laughs> I kept it tight. Okay, so now remember, when you go to adjust your loops, you wanna hang on to the loop while you're pulling the tail. Otherwise, what usually happens with Baker's Twine is as you're pulling that tail, it'll curl up and you can never get it to uncurl. It's like, it's like you just wrecked it. Not really wrecked it, but you know what I mean. It, it won't. It won't uncurl it. It's maddening is what it is. So if you just hold on to those ends, you won't have that problem. <laughs> Lori, <laughs> Lori, <laughs> that's not helpful. <laughs> Lori said, Jenny, don't watch. You're going to need that twine too. You really are, Jenny. So <laughs> just give up now. All right, next we're going to do some stamping. So I've got my Whisper White layer here. This is my... Um, two and three quarters by four. And then this one was the four, five and a quarter by four scored at two and a half. So this is gonna be my front panel. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is get my memento ink out in this super fun string of lights. 
This is just so, so fun. I love, love this stamp set. Okay, so we're going to stamp once. And then I'm gonna move it over a little bit because I don't want it to look real uniform, right? We're gonna stamp twice. And I'm inking the whole thing up because I don't know where I wanna go with this until, and maybe I'll stamp right here in the middle. There we go. Okay, so we've got three lines of lights. Then we're going to take out our cherry cobbler. I'm gonna move this over and I'm going to stamp my greeting on here. And um, this is coming again from the Making Christmas Bright Cherry Cobbler ink. I love photopolymers, my favorite rubber. There we go, isn't that pretty? Okay, now I've got my Stampin' Blends. You could certainly use markers, anything will work for this. We're not really blending anything. But what I've got here is the um, shaded spruce. So I'm gonna use the smaller ends on these. And this goes pretty darn quick. I'm just doing every third bulb in the green. And this just ends up being just so colorful and pretty. Love, love, love it. One, two, three. And this one over here, okay. Then I'm going with dark, that was dark shaded spruce, by the way. This is dark pumpkin pie. Lisa asks, why do you memento? Um, I used memento ink because I am using blender, the, the um, Stampin' Blends. These are alcohol markers, and you have to use memento ink with alcohol markers. If you try to use any other color of ink, it will bleed. It doesn't do well. Thank you for asking that question. I think that's what you meant there. Okay, and then here comes the dark, is this dark cherry cobbler? I think so. Hang on, my thumb's in the way. Yep, dark cherry cobbler. And I'm just gonna color in the rest of these. So again, quick and easy. Isn't that cute? It's already cute, right? You wanna make sure that your ink is dry before you start sticking your hand all over it too because now I have, like, you guys might not be able to see this, but I see ink. Um, my ink was on my hand and I kinda of moved it. So make sure that's dry before you do that. Okay, then we are going to take mini glue dots and I, I could try to use glue on here, but what I found is that um, glue does not like to stick to glimmer paper. Like, it's not a good adhesive to stick down on top of here. So I am using mini glue dots because they do stick well to glimmer paper. And that's just what I always reach for when I have a layer like this, okay? Then you're going to take these little lights and we've got all these um, little light bulb ends that we that we made. And I'm gonna push my little end. My bulb is up on the back of that end, and I'm just going about this from the back side. Take a mini glue dot, or I mean, I'm sorry, a mini dimensional, and I'm gonna put it right on there. And then a big dimensional on this part. And this was the red one. And then through the magic of TV, <laughs> I didn't want you guys to have to sit and wait forever for me to do that. You're gonna have to wait for me to get the dimensionals backings off anyway. So figured I'd save you the time for the rest of that. Okay, then I just took these and Here we go. I'm just going to put my little bulb there and you're just going to sporadically add these to your card layer. That's what I meant. Okay, so I saw somebody said you can use any of our inks. They are all water-based. Thank you for that. I didn't even think about that, but you're correct. They're all water-based. Um, stays on will not work. 
with the stamp and blend alcohol markers you cannot use that and as long as we're talking about that I want to test that little theory out because yeah look at that you can use it doesn't bleed either so yay thank you for um, for that tip okay so here's this part now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some more dimensionals. Wait till you see the inside of this card. It's really fun. So here we go. I'm going to put dimensionals here and here. And then I'm going to put one right here and one right about there. Okay? And I'm doing that because this is going to kind of overlap this open part and of course you don't want dimensionals because otherwise you can't open your card. Did I do that right? I did. I was I was panicking just a touch. I'm like oh my lord did I do that wrong? Now what I did here is I'm just going to put my layer right in the center of my card front. Make sure it's straight. That looks pretty good. Isn't that cute? Look how cute that is. Now what are we going to do on the inside? Well that's where this piece comes in. Okay, I am going to take the little stars, this little star image with the red, and I'm just going to stamp that on this side. And I'm going higher and lower and higher and lower, and you wanna to try to get these straight, <laughs> which, <laughs> I'm doing okay. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to take my lights again. And I'm just going to have those go just like this. And you're going to color those in with the Stampin' Blends, which I'm not going to do because you guys saw me do enough coloring here, I think. And then I've got the May Your Christmas Be. And then Bright. Now, I could have mounted the Bright on um, a block right under the May Your Christmas Be. But what I found is that when I did that, my Bright was a little further away from the bottom of the edge than I wanted it to be. So that's why I chose not to mount two stamps on the same block because it just it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Okay, here we go. We're going to burnish this edge. So see how that's a little bit bigger? It's supposed to be like that. Let me get this closed up. And then we're going to bring this in here. Now, here's how I put this on the inside. Where'd my glue go? Right here. I just added a little bit of glue. Hang on, I got it stopped up a little bit. There we go. To that edge and a little bit of glue to this edge. And we'll fix this all in a minute. And I'll tell you why, because I had a colossal disaster. I'm gonna close this now. So I glued it down here and now I'm closing it, okay. I want to make sure everything goes good here. There's something about when you fold it that, like, mm, it doesn't work well in the middle. So that's why you have to glue it the way that I told you or showed you. Because otherwise, it, it's, it's not going to work out to your advantage. <laughs> and I'll show you in a minute what I mean. Because mine, my first card that I made was kind of like a mess. Okay, this is going to overlap just a tiny bit here. And that's where I'm carrying that designer series paper from the front through to the inside. And isn't that just adorable? What do you guys think? Super, super cute. I love this bulb builder punch. This is called the Christmas Bulb Builder Punch. Isn't that cute? Okay, now let me show you where I got my inspiration for this fun fold. Again, another card from the Nilsville event that I went to. This used lovely as a tree, and we've got some of that rooted in nature designer series paper here with some hemp. 
and here's the inside. Again, another little strip here, but do you see where this is all bent and weird? That's because I put glue on the entire back of this layer and put it in here and then folded it. So you have to kind of work with that. A little bit of glue underneath that and here and then fold it and you know, that's what happened to the inside. So thanks Amy, thanks Lynn. I know, isn't it cool? It's a really cool little layout. I love it. I had a really good time. We all did at that Nilesville stamping event. Um, it was just, it was put on by Carmen. I can't remember Carmen's last name, but anyways, um, she did such a good job and we had some really easy, quick and easy, we made 18 cards that day. So quick and easy, but very neat, right? Um, not only did she um, design this one that I then created this from, but she also had um, a reindeer with some different paper and, and some different ribbon and stuff that um, helped me to design this one too. All right, you guys, um, I will show you some of my swap cards now because I know you're going to love those. And don't forget to share my video. Let me clean off my desk here a little bit so I have some room. And I don't have, oh, I don't know why. Oh, the smoky slate was for the bulb end. I'm like, I don't know why I had smoky slate ink, but yes, I do. Okay, let's put these away, clean up some mess. I've got beautiful swap cards to show you. And of course, you'll find all the details for these projects that we made tonight um, on my blog on Tuesday. I always post them on Tuesday each week. So we've got this and this and then where did my gorgeous... Here we go. This card that I sh just showed you how to do that part. Remember, I did not design this, so I just want to make that perfectly clear. <laughs> okay, swap cards. Where's my bag? I think we'll go through just a few of these. All right, here we go. Look at this beauty. I did not have time to take these out of their packaging. This was designed by Kathy Miller, and I can see that she used the um, shimmer paint on the background here and then that beautiful reversible ribbon. This uses the Noel, Joyous Noel stamp set. So, so pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? Mary Merlot and... Mm, Sahara Sand, maybe. Love that. Here is another one. And this one is made by Jan Faring. Is that right? Yeah, Faring, Faring. Isn't that pretty? This is that Christmas bauble. Just beautiful. That die cut is so pretty. And then she embossed with silver. Very, very pretty. Here comes another one using that same embossing folder that I did for my leaf card that I showed you earlier. This is the same embossing folder and she stamped the tree from the winter woods on the folder before she ran the white through her big shot. So that's how you do that technique and isn't that pretty. And this was um, Ruth Lily. Here comes another one. Yes, Jenny says that the um, Christmas Bulb Builder Punch reminds her of a shoe. I saw a stamp set with shoe prints using that punch too, so you can do that. Hi, Dina. Okay, here comes another swap card, and this one is from Carol Slack. And look at that. This is so, so pretty. I am not sure. Oh, um, Smack and Acetate. So I'm going to be showing you a similar technique like this, I think, on Wednesday. So you watch um, watch my blog. I'll have a video for you on YouTube. Hi, Semra. Semra, I just saw her. She graduated high school with me, um, and we, she was just at my class reunion. So glad you could tune in. She's a quilter. She is not a stamper, but she's a quilter, and she said she likes to watch my Sunday night show. So I'm all good with that. Here comes another really neat card using the, um, whoops, I was looking at it. This is a reflection technique. And isn't that pretty using that waterfront set? And this is made by Deb McCann. 
I believe. Keep all those in there. This is a spotlight. Yeah, Kay, sorry. <laughs> You're going to have to get that one. This is a spotlight technique. And isn't that pretty? This is, um, what is this called? Branch something or another. This stamp set. Very, very pretty. Love that. I wonder why my messages don't keep going up. Like, I've got 100 messages here. So, yeah, that I've missed because it doesn't scroll up for me. I don't know why. I'll have to ask somebody about that. Oh, who made this one? Oh, Kathy Beck. Kathy Beck is on my team. So, of course, she made a beautiful card, right? <laughs> you guys would like to join my team. I have business builders and I have a lot of discount shoppers. And it's fun being on my team regardless of what you want to do with it. So, pop me an email. I'll give you all the details. Isn't this gorgeous? Now, this is Rhonda Basler. And Rhonda used that glimmer paper on the back. So she stamped on our window sheet, colored the back of it with stamp and blends because other markers will not dry. And then there is a piece of glimmer, gold glimmer paper behind that. Isn't that just pretty? What a very, very unique card. And then we have the um, little farmhouse. This is Dina Turkowski. Look at this. Isn't that cool? Oops. It's upside down. <laughs> Look at, oh my gosh. Who's done that? Oh, Dina, if you're watching, not, not Dina Rico, but Dina Tarkowski. <laughs> I'm going to send this to my friend Sue because Sue sends me cards like this because she knows we'll laugh and laugh about it. <laughs> so that's really funny, but it's a beautiful card. So thank you. Laughing with you, not at you. And then, hang on you guys, I have to grab this. Because we have, I don't remember if I showed this to you yet, I might not have. We have a brand new promotion coming out starting November 1st. It's only available for the month of November. Is this Snowflake Showcase. And, um, oh my gosh, we've got two different stamp sets you can get. And then the framelits are to die for. There's two sheets of them. Look at these snowflakes and flowers. Aren't they gorgeous? I love this one. So the reason why I'm all goo goo gaga over this is because this card right here was made with this bundle. And this is called Snowflake Showcase. And isn't that just gorgeous? Absolutely beautiful. It also comes with these little snowflake trinkets. And these are neat because they are thinner than most of our metal embellishments. You get two different snowflakes in there. But they're thinner, so you're not going to have any problem mailing these and having them be too lumpy. So, yeah, snowflake trinkets. The other item that is in this bundle of products, and you can order you know, one, the other, or all of it. It doesn't matter. You don't have to order everything together. But um, this is our white velvet sheet. So this is like our designer series paper, and it's velvet paper. And it is so, so pretty and soft. And oh, who doesn't love velvet, right? Okay, so that is a brand new promotion. I will probably be using this um, next week on my Facebook Live. Don't forget that I am on every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. We'll be using the Snowflake Showcase, and I can't hardly wait to show you some beauty. I just know I can create beautiful stuff with this, right? Like, why wouldn't I be able to? So, um, yeah, Lisa's asking, where's Aunt Joyce? I don't know. Was Joyce watching tonight? I did not see that. So here's the cards that we made tonight. I will have all the dimensions up on the um, on the Facebook post with these in just a few minutes. And then I have to get my butt over to a conference call with um, a couple other demonstrators to figure out a game plan. We are starting a training series for our, our teams. And um, we have to figure out that game plan tonight. So I get to play a little bit more. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, it is 830. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. 
and I appreciate your sharing my video. I appreciate your comments. Um, I appreciate your orders. If you're going to place an order, you can do it right here on my website. Look for this host code in the right-hand column. You want to use that. Kathy says, thank you, Kelly, for another awesome Sunday night. Shelby says she enjoyed my Facebook Live again. Shar, thank you again for another good evening. Good night, Steve. Steve doesn't usually stay on here till the end. He just comes on in the beginning to harass me a little bit, and then he's gone. So... <laughs> So he's already gone, but I'll tell him you said bye. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I will go back through the comments and let you know if um, I miss something. I will be happy to answer that. So thanks, you guys, so much for tuning in. I couldn't be successful with the show without you. So thank you so much. Have a great night. Bye-bye.